two of 40 Days of Speaking Life. My name is Linda Brown. I'm a wife, mother, nana. I'm a licensed minister and registered nurse. We reside here in beautiful Wisconsin. I love Jesus and I love people. We are so thankful for all of you who have joined us. If you are new, we welcome you. And just to let you know, we are doing a 40-day word fast, and this is day 32, of speaking words of life, ridding ourselves of hurtful, idle words, and replacing them with the Word of God. I just want to thank our PIPS founder, Sister Billie Jean Bishop, for her burden, for prayer, and for each of us. God has been so good, and I am so thankful for partners in prayer and thankful that God has given us, at least for this time, this social platform to be able to share the Word of God. i just like to cover this lesson in prayer. Jesus, I plead your blood right now. I pray, God, that you would guide my words. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. I pray, God, that you would anoint the listeners, that you would anoint the words that are spoken. Pray, God, that you would anoint our ears and our eyes to see what you have for us. God, I want to taste and see how sweet the word of God is. Oh, taste and see how good you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, our key scripture comes from Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Recently, I was diagnosed um, with advanced liver fibrosis. I haven't shared it with many people. We have been in prayer and I'm still in the process of, of getting this worked up and I'll be having an MRI in a couple of weeks um, to stage where I'm at with, with the process. But one thing that I have learned from this diagnosis is though I am an active Weight Watchers member, um, I, I no longer look at the scale as my victory, but it's what I am putting into my body or what I am not putting into my body. Fruits have become much sweeter on this journey. The desire for foods that are high in sugar and fat and simple carbs are waning. And I have developed, I have acquired a taste for those foods that are rich in vitamins and antioxidants. And a favorite of mine has become my spinach smoothie. I take a smoothie with a banana and I add some spinach and almond milk and to the mind, you think, oh, spinach, that would not taste good. But you know, when I throw it in and it's frozen and I throw it into my smoothie in the morning and a protein shake, I use a half of one that, that tastes really good to me. And when I mix it all up, it I don't even taste the spinach. And I've acquired a taste for things that are not so sweet, not so rich and dense in simple carbs. This didn't just happen overnight. No, when I first got the diagnosis back in January and spoke with the gastroenterologist in February, it was made very clear to me that I either had to make some changes or I was looking at five to 10 years. And my thought was my family, my children, my grandchildren. And I thought, okay, so what do we do? How do I, how do I reverse? What, what can I do about all of this? And so my daughter and I, we started into Weight Watchers and my weight is coming down. I'm becoming more active. My food choices have changed. I've acquired a taste for it. And you know, when, when we go to the doctor and we go to the nurses and they talk to us and they say, well, you're a high risk patient or you have this going on or something else is going on, right away it gives us a negative connotation of what's going on in our body. I'm thankful that the people that I have talked to have been very hopeful and, and very, um, they've given me good suggestions. Their words have been encouraging. They've given me the, the power to be able to, they have enabled me to be able to say no to this and yes to this. Their support has been so vital to the decisions and choices that I'm making right now. And when 
we recognize that the words of encouragement, the words of offering hope, the words of giving you direction is a biblical principle. And even the world can use the word of God and the principles that are taught by removing words that are judgmental or criticism or sarcastic or negative or complaining or, or, or words that are spoken without hope or gossip. We as Christians are carriers. We are carriers of healing and encouraging words. When my brother is down, I don't need to stand over him and heap, heap words of condemnation, but rather I need to encourage him, lift him up. And the Lord wants us to go and infect others today with these words of life. Now, the 40, day, the 40 days of speaking life was birthed out of a devotional that we are also reading, The 40 Day Word Fast by Tim Cameron. It's an excellent book. And as you go through the days, you know, it challenges you. What is the Lord speaking to me through the verses that I'm reading? Were there any words that I'm listening and hearing myself say to my coworkers, my husband, my wife, my children, my grandchildren? What words are coming out of my mouth? Are my words offering sweetness to others? As I began to think about the Bible and men in the Bible and the scriptures that are in there, several thoughts came to my mind. The first one was Jeremiah. Jeremiah, there's a couple of scriptures I'd like to share. Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. There's a promise here that God has said, if ye will go and pray unto me, I will hear you. If ye will seek me and find me, then you will search me with all your heart. And Jeremiah 20 and 9, Jeremiah had been under a lot of persecution. He had gotten to a point that he had become so discouraged. He had made up his mind that he was not going to speak another word of God. He was not going to tell people, he, as far as he was concerned, they can make their decisions, their choices. They can walk away from God. They can do whatever they want. But before too long, this is what Jeremiah came to this conclusion. And I will never forget the day that God gave this to me several years ago. I don't know, 12, maybe 12 years ago now. But I felt what Jeremiah felt once in my spirit. And over and over again, I felt it since. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. He's saying, I'm not going to mention God, nor speak any more in his name. But his word... His word, God's word, was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. And what this verse is saying is that the word of God was so strong. It was in Jeremiah's heart. It was a part of who he was. It was as a burning fire, the passion. It was shut up in his bones and he was weary with withholding it. He couldn't do it anymore. He had to speak words of life. And as I was thinking about the foods that we put into our body, there's wholesome foods, there's pure or organic foods that are available. There are foods that are high in antioxidants, berries, strawberries, those type of foods, beets. Um, and then there's foods that are so high in vitamins such as broccoli and, and asparagus and uh, Brussels sprouts and all of those green leafy vegetables. And then we've got our fruits, our berries and bananas and oranges and each one of them that have the sugar in it, but are good for us. Um, one of our Weight Watcher sessions, the leaders had said, you know, and whether it's true or not, I, I can't tell you the science behind it. But people would say, you know, I have this addiction to sugar. And, and she said, truly, it's not an addiction because if it were an addiction, a banana would satisfy that craving for sugar because bananas are actually higher in sugar, but good sugar, healthy sugar, sugar that God intended for our bodies to process. And so that sugar that was in that fruit was sweet and it would satisfy. Why? Because we had become acquired to what is good, what we're putting into our bodies. 
And just as acquiring a taste for healthy foods, for vitamins, for foods that are rich in antioxidants and, and foods that are rich and healthy for us that make our bodies function at its full capacity, just as our bodies find those foods satisfying, so is it with the Word of God. We acquire a taste for the Word of God. We acquire, we desire what God is saying to us, and those words become sweet. David said in Psalm 119, 103, How sweet are your words to the taste of my mouth, sweeter than honey to my mouth. David had found that the word of God was sweet. Yeah, there are times that I am convicted, many times, by the word of God. But, oh, truly, his word is satisfying. I find it sweet to my soul. Psalm 34 and 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. That David knew that God was sweet. God's teachings, his law, his word, it was sweet to our soul. It was good for us. He acquired a taste for the word of God. You know, it takes 21 days before something becomes a habit. If we're not in the habit of praying and reading the Word of God, today is a good day to start. We may not start out acquiring a taste and an understanding right away for the Word of God, but I will guarantee you if you will keep putting forth the energy, the effort to get in there, to understand, to read, and to apply the Word of God, in time it will become a part of you. It will become a part of what you speak, what you think, what you say. Job 23 and 12 says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And we all, we enjoy eating. We enjoy fellowship. We enjoy cooking and preparing. But Job found that he had, he esteems the word of, of the mouth of God more than his necessary food. The word of God became everything to him because it gave him his substance. He no longer enjoyed necessary food. As a matter of fact, he truly loved the word of God. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen says, Your words were found and I ate them, and your word became to me the joy of and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. And when I read that passage of scripture, your words were found and I ate them. I heard that before. In the book of Daniel, Daniel 10, if you've been praying, if you've been seeking, if you've been standing in the gap, don't give up. Because the Bible, when Daniel set his mind to pray, it wasn't till three 10 days later, 21 days later, that God responded. And this is what God said. Daniel 10 and 12, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. I want God to hear my words, because God will take those words, and he will hear them, and he will respond, and he will do what is needed. These words, our words, are they sweet? Are they pleasant? Are they encouraging? Our words, even what we hear ourselves speak, you know, I, I am one of those people I've learned. I've learned over time, graciousness, I guess. But when people would compliment me or say something, I would just respond with, oh, no, I, I'm really not. I'm, I'm really dumb or I'm this or I'm that. Or I would do something and I'd say, oh, that was really dumb. What did I do that for? And that negative self-talk, as we, as we speak to ourselves, you know, it goes to our mind, our emotions and our will. And, and then it becomes a part of us. But you see, words are also healing. And if we speak words of healing, of encouraging, they will heal. They are like he heal health to our bones. They, words are so powerful that they are like the bone structure. They hold us up. They keep us in rocky places. They keep us when we feel discouraged. They keep us when we're going through a trial. 
What are the words that we are speaking to ourselves? Are we speaking life or are we speaking death? God desires that our words be full of life. God's word is sweeter than the honeycomb. It's full of nutrients. It's full of antioxidants. Oxidants. It, it's full of nutrition. Today, as we sit and we read the word of God, allow God to speak to you. God is not against us. He is for us. And when we can speak those words and believe those words, the apostles, they prayed for boldness, boldness, confidence to speak the word of God. Let us speak it in our homes. Let us speak it to ourselves. Let us recognize that God, God has heard our word. He heard it from the first day that we set our heart to understand. He heard it. And he has taken that word. And one day, like Daniel, God's going to say, thy words were heard and I am come for thy words. What words are we speaking to God that he's going to come for? Today, I want my words to speak life. I want God to come back for those words and to remind me that his word is sweeter than the honeycomb. And as we make choices today, let it be choices that speak life. Speak life. What verses today, you know, I challenge you to look back and, and think about what did these verses say to me today? Were there any particular words that I spoke today that I need to ask God to take away? What words am I speaking to myself every day that are negative words? And are my words offering sweetness? Sweetness like God's word offers to us, to those around us. I pray that this blesses you today and that you are encouraged. God loves us. He has a plan for our lives. And as we continue, we have a, just another week of 40 days of speaking life. May you find the sweetness in the word of God. God has a plan and his word is sweet. God bless you. I love you all. Make it a great day.